If you recall before I started playing around with the IRF uh, 530-based amplifier, I was doing some testing with my uh, Taylor mixer, which you can see up the top here, and um, the IRF 510-based amplifier that I'd, uh, that I'd built up before. And I'll include a link below to that uh, if you're interested. I thought I'd repeat some of these tests, uh, but this time with the IRF 530-based amplifier that I've been playing around with, and uh, see what some of the results look like. But let's first quickly walk through the test setup. Okay, so the test setup is as follows. Uh, so I'm injecting a uh, 700 and 1900 uh, hertz two-tone signal into here, around about uh, 500 millivolts. Uh, the Taylor mixer then processes those audio signals, mixes it with the 14 megahertz carrier, and it produces a lower sideband signal with both the carrier and the upper sideband signal suppressed. That signal is then injected into the amplifier right here. Um, and uh, note that I've added, and you can just see it, just let me move over this a little bit. I've actually added a um, low pass filter, 20 uh, meter low pass filter at the output of the amplifier. That uh, signal from the amplifier goes off here and uh, I've got it currently going off to a uh, 30 watt 50 dB 50 ohm attenuator that's uh, hooked up to my spectrum analyzer and I'm also tapping off right here and uh, sending the, the output of the amplifier to my oscilloscope so we can see both the, the, uh, the frequency view as well as the um, uh, as well as the time domain view of the output signal okay, so let's have a quick look at the uh, output so there's that uh, two-tone output let me just uh, freeze that so we can see it um, so there you can see it's a 68 volt peak to peak signal. Um, the sine wave looks uh, like a clean sine wave. So in other words, there's not, no flat topping. And you can see we've got a clear crossover point there. So you don't have a sort of a this business going on in the, uh, in the output signal. So uh, the output signal uh, looks uh, quite clean uh, and linear. Uh, and just for comparison purposes, uh, when I actually ran the test with my RF510 based amplifier, I was getting around about, uh, I believe around about 34, 35 volts peak to peak on the output. So let's have a look at that same signal uh, on the spectrum analyzer and see what, uh, see what we can see. Okay, so here's the uh, spectrum analyzer output of that uh, same two-tone signal. Um, and as you can see, Here's the two peaks here. This is the 1900 hertz peak. This is the 700 hertz peak. Here's the carrier right here. And uh, let's just go through those uh, those peaks and let's see what we see. So that's uh, minus 16 dBm. And then we go down to the carrier, which is minus 50 dBm. And then over to the most prominent of the other side peaks is minus 42 dBm. So we've got a basically a minus 26 dBm difference between the expected two peaks and then these these intermodulation products right here and here. Let's have a look now at the uh, the whole of the spectrum and you can see so this is going from around about uh, 5 megahertz up to 100 megahertz here and you can see there's that peak there uh, at 14 megahertz so there's my there's my output signal and you can see uh, all the way down to, if we have a look at uh, the right peak there, you can see that there is a, uh, a, uh, a harmonic product at 28 megahertz, but it's way down at uh, minus 68, uh, nearly minus uh, 70 uh, dBm. Okay, so let's have a look now with, the, uh, with just a single 700 hertz tone in there. And you can see the output there. Now the oscilloscope's picked up uh, that it is... 13.9993, which is 700 hertz less than uh, 14 megahertz, uh, and a single tone in SS in single sideband should look like uh, just like CW. Uh, so that's looking good also, and you can see uh, the peak to peak uh, uh, the peak to peak um, value there is 70.4 volts. Um, I always get the math wrong when I do it in my head, but I know. Uh, 66 uh, volts peak to peak is uh, is around about 10 watts so that represents i guess 11 or 12 watts uh, roughly um, of output let's have a look at uh, the current draw so again this is uh, around about 70 volts peak to peak 
Um, so it's around about 12, uh, 12 and a quarter watts output. You can see 15 volts at uh, around about 2.4 amps uh, input there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little video on the uh, IRF 530s and having a look at the uh, linearity of the amplifier. Um, this uh, amplifier is a bit of a, a fun build. Um, certainly, uh, uh, this heatsink is getting pretty warm, um, and uh, you know, the, the, probably the most I've been able to get out of this uh, at any linearity is probably 12, 13, 14 watts um, uh, top. So. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a way of getting 45 watts out of this, but uh, I haven't been a a able to get uh, anywhere near that uh, at the moment. Um, as I said uh, before, I'm running this at uh, 15 volts supply, so certainly if you jack up the supply, I'm sure you'll get uh, greater output. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. That's all for now.